Good morning, attendees. This is Alexandra Cookson with the data team. I am the data quality trainer. Um, today, we're going to be going over the special education exit report. Joining me today are Sean Collier and Brandy. Um, Brandy, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. Would you mind coming off mute? Good year. Okay, good year. Um, and then Sean, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello everyone. I'm Sean Collier. I'm the Special Education Data Manager. All right, wonderful. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, so once again, for those of you who have joined since we um, introduced, we um, are using our Q&A function today. So feel free to post any questions that you have uh, as we go and we will answer them throughout the presentation. Before we really get into the report, I did wanna go through some of the upcoming reporting. End of the school year gets rather busy um, in multiple ways, and reporting is one of those ways. So um, ESEA demographics report is due on the 15th of this month, so next week. Um, main schools and main school approval for next school year, those will need to be in throughout the summer. Those can come in after you have a new superintendent, they can certify the report. And end of year truancy behavior bullying, um, those certifications are due end of June. And exiting student enrollments from Synergy will need to be done by 630. So um, all of those are coming up this month. Um, all of those also have a webinar that we recently um, were able to host, and those are posted on the help desk website on the webinars page. Coming up in July is the daily attendance certification report, which is due on the 15th, and the special education exit certification report, which is what we'll be going over today, that will be due on 7.30. Um, so daily attendance has a webinar that was our end of year enrollment, our end of year um, certification reports. That was our webinar for that one. And then this webinar will be posted by the end of the day today, hopefully. Um, been doing pretty good getting them up pretty quick so that should be available this should be available as soon as um, possible on the help desk website we'll be focusing on the data reporting instructions tile that's where you're going to find your instructions for the special education exit report and on that page you'll be looking for the special education exit report instructions so these have been reviewed and they are ready for um, use this summer for this report. <clears throat> All of the links in this uh, webinar uh, on this presentation will be live and the webinar, the presentation will be posted along with the webinar for anyone who wants to be able to revisit it and utilize the links as we go through. So this is just your overview of the report. So students who have exited special education um, services during the school year, um, they must be exited in Synergy. So State Synergy is where all this information will be entered, and then the information will be updated in NEO into the reports. So student information is entered into State Synergy, and then the SAUs um, are required to certify in the special education exit report found in NEO. So we're gonna really focus on the NEO side of things today, um, but just know that any updates to the report in NEO need to happen in Synergy. And there is the timer um, on the help desk website that will let you know when the next upload will happen from Synergy to NEO to be reflected in those reports. Um, and so this reporting period contains all extensions, just so everyone is aware, there are no extensions beyond um, the 30th. So please be aware that that is a hard deadline and um, all data will need to be in by the 30th of, Ju of July. Um, so just keep that in mind, um, get it in as soon as you can. All LEAs with publicly funded students are required to report. The reporting period for this, uh, for this report would be the school year 2022-2023. That school year runs from July 1st to June 30th. So that is our um, recognized school year. If your school year goes beyond 630, 
please be aware that it will need to you will need to exit your students by six. Um, it will need to include any students exited before 630. So um, be just be aware of that. We have more information about that in our end of year enrollment exits webinar as well about exiting students within the current school year. The report will be populating or has been populating since 6-1. So the report is currently open and can be reviewed for certification if you have not already done so. So you have some time before the end of the school year and a little bit beyond as well. As we said, it will be due on 7-30. So we have two months of this report um, being open where it will be populating in NEO so that it can be certified. In order to locate the report, you will need NEO access. In NEO, you'll be accessing student data, student reports, and then it will be the special education exit report. All the reports are in alphabetical order. It by special education is toward the bottom. Um, that is its own section. Um, once you log into NEO, um, you'll need to navigate to the student data, but if you don't have access to student data, you will need to request it. So your superintendent will need to send in an access request form um, for you to have access to student reports uh, if you do not already have access. That is done through a NEO access request form. Uh, this is once again an active link and you can also find it on our help desk website uh, to, find, to get access to this um, section of NEO. If you do not have a staff assignment, an active staff assignment in NEO, so let's say you want your new um, special education director, you have a new special education director who recently started or is starting in July and they'll need to, re to be reporting on this, um, they will need to be added into NEO by your business manager, your HR personnel. Um, they will need to add them into NEO so that they can have an account created for them. If someone does not have an active staff assignment in NEO staff, they will not be given access to, um, they will not be given access to the module. We did just have a question come in um, about data being in by the 30th of July. Yes, that is true. The 30th of July is the due date for this report. Um, so all the data needs to be in and the report needs to be certified by your special education director by the 30th. So we'll go through the modules and what they look like in NEO. Um, this is your main screen when you log in. We'll link into student data. And then once we're in student data, we'll link, we'll go to student reports. You have two different access points, one up here, and then you have another one toward the bottom. On the student report screen, they are in alphabetical order. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom. Special services has its own section and you can link to the special education um, exit certification report or the special education exit details report. The certification report is going to be your aggregate counts of students who are exiting special education, whereas your details report is going to go into the individual students who make up those counts. Um, so if you want to see who is included on this report, you would click into the details report. If you're the special education director and everything has been reviewed and it's ready for certification, you would click on the certification report. On the certification report screen, you will see the number of students who graduated with a diploma, number of students who reached maximum age, number of students dropped out, exited to regular education, moved and known to be continuing, and deceased, and then you will see a total number of students who have exited special education. On this report, there's also the link to the um, details report. You have a link for both your attending district and your responsible district. So your attending students are students who are within your school district, who are attending in your schools, uh, whereas the responsible district are students who are outplaced and they, but your district is still responsible for those students. Um, if you have questions about who would be responsible for a student, that would be answered in your enrollment guides on the Help Desk website. So there's an enrollment guidance page and you can determine that um, who, who would have responsible for, responsibility for students on that page for their enrollment. Um, 
If you have questions about any of the information on a responsible district report, highly recommend reaching out to your um, district that is responsible for them. This part of the report would be where you would have your special education uh, director certify the report at the bottom once all the data has been reviewed and verified. With that, we will link into the details report. So let's go to the details report. On the details report, here you, is where we would be able to see any students who are attending responsible district. Um, is You would see your attending district where they actually are um, placed. So we can see we have a student here who is outplaced to a different district, um, but the responsible district is still um, with the um, people looking at the report, so in this case, rainbows and unicorns. Um, and so if there were any questions about this particular student uh, and their um, status or their exit, then we would want to reach out to that district to say uh, to see what was going on. Um, that would be communication between the two districts is going to be really key there in ensuring that all the data is accurate here. In this report, you can search for particular students if you would like to verify that they are on the report. So you can search for them. You can also save and export this report. And I usually recommend exporting to Excel. You can do a lot more um, manipulation to the data to see different pieces, different, um, uh, you can sort by grade level, you can sort by, um, status or reason. You can report, uh, sort by disability or exceptionality. Um, however you want to sort the data would be much, is much more, um, a lot more options in Excel if you wanted to export it that way. There is a column sorting option in NEO. However, it's only going to do this by alphabetical order. Um, and so you'll have sections, but you won't really be able to narrow it down and take pieces out to be able to see um, just individual subgroups of students. So you have that option here as well, but you get more options in Excel. So that's why we usually recommend um, exporting. And then the last thing that we wanted to go over today was um, enrollment exits and special education exits. In our webinar a few weeks ago um, on enrolling, on exiting student enrollments in, as a whole, we talked about that there are some connections between exiting a student's enrollment and exiting a student in uh, from special education services. So this screen here is a clip of our data dictionary for the enrollment data dictionary. Students who are exited with particular codes are going to be exited with whichever special education code um, goes along with that enrollment exit code. So this will this enrollment data dictionary will give you the information about how those exits correlate with one another. So here we can see that if we exit a student as graduated with a regular advanced international baccalaureate or other type of diploma with code 01921, then their special education exit is going to be graduation with diploma. So that is automatically going to happen if your data person um, in your district exits the student as graduated, then the special education record will automatically reflect graduation with the diploma. That goes for transferred to home instruction, exits to regular education, um, exiting to regular um, Exiting to regular education also kind of, there's a whole other data dictionary for special education exits that does not necessarily reflect what you're seeing here. But this is just to let you know that if you have students who are exited and you're not really sure why they were already exited in a specific way, that you would wanna reach out to your um, data personnel and say, you know, how, how did this happen? Um, it may have just been that they got to it first. So something that you can do to kind of mitigate a little bit of this is have your special education data entry person go in and exit particular students 
however they know they need to be exited. And then your data personnel can go in and they can exit the student's enrollment, how they've been told to exit it. And that will kind of mitigate some of these um, challenges. So just be aware of that as you come into this, that if there are any issues with some of the exits that you may need to go and talk to your data, um, your enrollment specialist to say, you know, how, how did these two align and consult your enrollment data dictionary to see how something may have happened with your exit. Um, so this is just a really great tool to see how things are correlating with each other within Synergy. There's also another resource that I don't have in here that um, if they that has the special education data dictionary. So you have a whole other data dictionary that goes through the specific codes of exiting special education students. And one of those codes is exiting to regular education. So if you had a student who had you had an IEP meeting um, end of the school year and they're no longer receiving services, that code can be exited to reflect that. Now, if you don't get that in before the end of the school year and the data specialist exits the um, exits the student as not enrolled eligible to return, they're not going to come up with any exit. So it will have to be manually entered or through an upload. I had a question come in about where we can find the enrollment data dictionary. The enrollment data dictionary and all other data dictionaries are on the Synergy Instructions page on the Help Desk website. Um, so the, if you scroll down to the bottom of the Synergy Instructions page, you'll find the data dictionaries and they're all listed out. And so you'll see um, student enrollment and then you'll see uh, there's another one for special education. And at the end of the line is your data dictionary. It'll open up an Excel sheet that looks similar to what you're seeing on the screen here. Um, and you have multiple different tabs that will go through each of the um, codes specifically for uh, each data element that needs to be entered in each upload. So those are all there. And I'll type my answers into this as we kind of get toward the end here. Um, I had another question come in about how do we list a student who has enrolled in adult education? So adult education has its own codes. Um, so an enrollment for a student who goes to special education, um, I would need, I'm trying to think, it would depend on how you exited them. Um, I, I'm gonna need to do a little bit more digging on that and get that answer for you um, to answer it properly, unless Sean or Brandy have an answer for that. Um, I believe Alexandra, I believe that um, for the um, end of special education, it would be exit to regular education if that were the case. Okay, that was yeah. what I was thinking as well. Um, yeah, because it, they would be exited to another district technically. Yes, and if they weren't if they weren't enrolled in special education um, and they were uh, going to um, what was it, adult ed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would it would be considered exit to regular education. And OK, we have another question come in. Um, does the school exit all special education students for the summer or just the ones that have moved? No longer eligible, uh, died, transferred. Um, so the answer to this question is that all students are exited. All student enrollments are exited. So when we're looking at this screen here, um, not enrolled eligible to return is this code that is used to exit students who are no, who you believe are coming back next school year. So all students will need to be exited with that code unless you have information to suggest otherwise that they might be going to a charter school or they're transferring to another district or they're um, moving out of state, they would be exited with a different type of code. Um, the students who are exited as not enrolled eligible to return will not have any end of special education. So that report or that record will stay open, which is what you want. 
And next year, you would need to go in and add the new line for that special education record. So there would be a new line that would need to be added once the enrollment is open um, to say that everything has remained the same. If things changed over the summer somehow, um, you would want to exit the status of the student to reflect um, their, their change in disability status or setting, however it may have been updated. So the answer to that question is all student enrollments get exited, but not necessarily all student ex, uh, special education exits get um, uploaded because not all students are exiting services. Um, if there's an expelled student receiving tutoring with an IEP enrollment at school level, expelled or involuntary withdrawn, but special education um, not really sure what the question is for this one. Um, if there is an expelled student who is receiving tutoring with an IEP, enrollment at school level is expelled or involuntary withdrawn. The special ed program is coded as home hospital. Sean, do you have do you have any thoughts on that one? Um, <clears throat> I guess not without clarification. Yeah, I'm not um, really sure either. Yeah, there is a home hospital. There's a home hospital educational setting, but that's not an exit reason. Um, either I mean, either they'd still be receiving special education or they would not. Um, so as long as they're still receiving any kind of special education, you know, they they wouldn't they wouldn't be exited with a special education end code. Um, I do know that uh, homeschooled children, if uh, if uh, a, a parent or caregiver uh, decides to homeschool and exit special education, that's an exit to regular education. Um, Correct. But uh, yeah, without without clarification, uh, I'm I'm not sure what else to say about that one. Yeah. Um, and so there's another one here that says, so there is no end date for special ed. Um, so if you exit a student, um, it, it, there's no specific date in which you need to end a student by. I don't know if that's your question, um, but you all student enrollments need to be exited by the 30th of June. Um, but if the student is going to be coming back next year, then they don't need a special education end date because their special education services have not ended. Um, so I'm not really sure if that answers that question, but maybe. Um, and then another question is, is the is the not enrolled eligible to return a new status? No, that is not a new status. That is the code that is used for enrollment. Um, and enrollments uh, that, that not enrolled eligible to return is not going to show up on your special education exit report. The reason that I am showing this screen here is to let everyone know that there is a correlation between how students are exited from their enrollment and how they might be exited from their special education service. So not enrolled eligible to return is nothing that will show up on your special education report. Um, or your special education exit report. Um, that's why it's left blank here. There's no correlation here. So these from this side over, these are all of your enrollment exits. From here to the right of the screen, these are all your special education exit codes. So these are what your special or what your data specialist may be working with, whereas these are the codes that your special education personnel may be working with. And it's good, it's really important to know that the two can impact each other. So if your data person exits with these codes, this is what will show up on your special education records. If your special education record is exited in a specific way, these won't impact what you're doing. So if you start by doing special education exits first, and then your data person goes in and does their uh, enrollment exits, things should be fine. Um, but know that if your special, if your data person goes in and does their exits first for enrollment entirely, you're going to see students come up on for the special education report. Yeah, thanks, Alexandra. 
Yeah, go thanks, for it, Sean. Thanks. Yeah, and if if folks just want to see the special education exit reasons, those those and only those are listed in the instructions for the special education exit report. So that link Correct. is what was sent out to all the special education directors um, in the announcement um, that that this uh, collection was opening. So you'll only see those special education exit reasons if you look at the instructions for this report. Correct. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just answering a question here. Hi, it's Brandy. Um, the only exit code I'm not seeing listed on on this sheet is reached maximum age. Mm -hmm. And that would be if a student, the day they turn 22, they're no longer eligible and they will have reached maximum age. And I'm not seeing that one listed here because it was there's nothing for it to match up in for enrollment. So that right. may be one one they run into that we haven't discussed yet. I yes. think everything else they've at least seen on this list. I was seeing it on the screen. Oh, the, did you? Yeah, the previous screen that you were on, it's it's listed there kind of midway. Okay. Yeah, it uh, reached maximum age of service 01926. That's because uh, you can exit a student that way as well. But I did just want to go through really quick here how to access these um, data dictionaries. So there are two different ones that we're referring to. This is the Help Desk website. On the Synergy Instructions page, if we scroll down to the bottom, data dictionaries for this current school year, there is one for special education, and the data dictionary will go through all of the different exit codes specific to special education. So let me pull it over here. So these are all your exit codes for special education. This is what you would see. Whereas what I was showing on the slideshow was the specific ones that tie into enrollment exits. Those are going to be found in the student enrollment data dictionary. There is a connection between the two that everybody really needs to be aware of. Um, if you're seeing any issues, be sure that you're communicating with your special educator or with your data personnel. And I'm just going through some of these other questions. I think I lost my place. Um, so yes, I think I left off on this question. Is this something that registrars do normally and not something that the special ed side needs to do? Uh, I, I would not say that um, this is something for one person or the other. I would say this is something that it would definitely need to be a team of the special education um, side as well as the registrar to be aware of these two things um, because they impact each other. Um, so if you exit a student, um, if the if the registrar exits a student a specific way, it's going to affect special education data. So you would want to be communicating with each other to ensure that everything is accurate. So I would not say that it's one or the other. I would say that if that everyone should be looking at the report to ensure that everything looks accurate. Um, it is something that you can have your registrar exit your students. Um, however, you would want to still go in on the special ed side of things and look at that and make sure everything looks accurate. Um, okay. Um, and so I have another question here that um, a really good question about a roadmap for districts to be able to make corrections and synergy on special education data and exit status. Um, so I'm curious, I, I feel like this question is about how locked down special education data is. It You are not able to update um, exit statuses uh, which is really important to note. So if this exit status is put in and it is put in incorrectly, it is something that you would need to call the help desk about to get it fixed. Because what we're looking for here is that um, if there's a change in a student record, we would want to see a new line created, a new record created for the student. Um, 
so if a student, so I guess my answer for your roadmap question is that if you, if a student is exited incorrectly and their everything else is correct in that line, they're exited as graduated by accident and they're really just not enrolled eligible to return. And so you need that updated. That would be something to call the help desk about and get help from them. Um, it is locked down to ensure that student records are not updated with incorrect codes. Um, so we want to be able to see each change in a student's uh, disability status or their setting. And so what we've done is kind of locked it down so that we can see the changes throughout the student's history of their special education services. And there have been issues in the past where a student's disability status or their special education setting has changed and the exit status uh, or uh, yeah, the exit status or something was not reflective of the history of the student. Um, it just looked like they had had that status the entire time that they were re receiving services. So what has been done is the district, the um, state has decided that each time a new line needs to be created, we have added a, um, you have to add a line for the new status. Um, so if an excerpt is truly incorrect um, and this, everything else is correct in the line, then you can call the help desk to get it updated. But it is not something that you would be able to do on your own. Um, we have a few kids who have moved out of district and our data person was not able to exit them without going into Synergy and exiting them for special services first. Never required before and you mentioned you should automatically exit. Um, I don't believe this is a very new change um, for exiting students, um, but it should not be causing any issues. Um, if you experience that problem again with exiting, not being able to exit student enrollments because of a special education record, uh, give us a call at the help desk and we'll see uh, why it's doing that. It shouldn't, it should exit them. Um, I'm curious when that might have been happening. Let's see. We have a question. I'm going to kind of defer this one to Sean um, or Brandy. Um, we have been trying to get the answer to the destruction of student records. Um, has the age changed to 28 or can still can we still get rid of their records at the age of 26? Ah, um, yeah, I, I really don't know the answer to that question. Um, I just don't know. Uh, I, I would have to defer to probably my director to see what uh, regulations there are about that. Um, why don't uh, why don't we have that person contact? Um, me send send me an email sean s h a w n dot collier c o l l i e r at main dot gov and um i'll check on that i'll put that in the um chat here too yeah yeah um, thank you Okay, um, and so just to continue moving forward. So this report is only looking at students who are no longer receiving services. Um, this should not include students who are changing their disability status. So um, once again, that kind of goes back to our not enrolled eligible to return. Um, and so 
just kind of be aware that this is only for students who are no longer receiving services or who are no longer receiving services from your district. Uh, once again, it does include students who have moved and are known to be continuing. Um, so just be aware of that as well. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So this is the kind of the conclusion of our webinar. So for reporting questions or if you need any students uh, records updated, uh, something was in, incorrectly added into uh, Synergy that you need to update the line, please feel free to contact the help desk and they can help you update um, the student record. For training purposes, and it seems like, so I'm seeing a lot of really great questions about um, things that people want to kind of get into, you know, nitty gritty and how to do things and uh, what connects to what, and I would be happy to talk to you in more depth, kind of one-on-one, -on -one, or we can kind of do some small group work with that. Um, but getting into those types of questions uh, can be a little bit easier on a smaller group basis or an individual basis. Um, I would be absolutely thrilled to come and talk to you at your district, um, come and sit with you, or we can do a virtual call. Please feel free to reach out to me um, at two, uh, my phone number is 446-3897, or feel free to just shoot me an email, um, alexandra.cookson at main.gov, um, and we can go through all of the data dictionaries, how it all ties together. Um, I've had some really great conversations with special education directors and um, the data personnel in a district uh, that, you know, things kind of really came together and it was really helpful. Um, and we got we got into a lot more than we can get into in just a half hour webinar um, for everyone. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions um, at any time as you're going through the report or if you want to know more about any special education reports that are kind of coming down the pike. Um, I would be happy to go through those with you. And I'm not seeing any more questions come in. Um, I am seeing some people kind of pop off. I'm going to hang out and answer these questions that are still in here. Um, so feel free to throw any in there that you want to ask. Um, and we will wrap up. Um, so to clarify, if enrollment is exit first with code, then correlate with special ed. Still need to go in and enter the exit data. Um, so, oh, great question. So to clarify, if enrollment is exited first with the code that correlates to special education exit, um, you would still want to go in and check the data, not necessarily go in and add the enrollment. If it's missing uh, or add the exit, if it's missing an, an exit and it needs an exit, then you can update it. Um, but if it so like if it didn't populate from the enrollment exit, then you would definitely want to go in. But the biggest thing is going in and checking that data and making sure that the enrollment exit was truly reflective of the special education exit. It does automatically populate, um, so just be sure to check that over. And if anything needs to be updated on that, um, to clarify once again, if anything did need to be updated, like the exit, the enrollment exit improperly reflects on the special education exit, then you would want to call the help desk to update that code. There will be a PDF of the slides available um, after the webinar once I get the webinar posted and um, the PowerPoint will be posted alongside it. Alexandra, I'm going to jump off to join another meeting that uh, began okay. at 1030. So um, yeah, thank, thank you so much for, for this presentation. It was very thorough, re really great. Um, and we all appreciate that. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Alexandra and everybody for attending. I too need to jump off to go to that 1030. Have a Perfect. good day, thank you.
All right, I am not seeing any new questions coming in. Um, if anyone has any, please feel free to reach out to me or the help desk, um, but feel free to pop off. I'm just gonna answer a few more questions. Um, so I'll be hanging out or you can ask a question here uh, for the next couple minutes. I'll be typing out some answers to people. Thank you, everyone. I haven't seen any new questions come in. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will be in contact throughout the summer. Please feel free to reach out with any questions um, or training opportunities.